Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. This is a thorough and in-depth review of the Promise Ultra 66 PCI IDE controller. This video is really feature packed. There are some time codes below in the description if you don't want to watch the whole thing and you just want to get to the benchmarks. But what, are, what is in store for you? Well, we will definitely compare the onboard ID controller first. We're going to have a look how optical drives work with this controller. Um, we're going to hook up a fast ID drive, but also trying uh, an SSD drive with an ID to start a bridge. We'll have a look at flashing the BIOS. We'll have a look at the website and the drivers. Uh, lots of benchmarks. And at the end, of course, a conclusion recommendation summary, the usual stuff. So without further ado, enjoy this video, guys. This is the test system we're using in the video. The details are below in the description. The motherboard is a slot one motherboard from AOpen. We're using 128 megabytes of RAM. The processor is an Intel Pentium 3 running at 600 megahertz. The video card is a GeForce FX 5200, mostly because it's got a DVI output, which makes my life easier for capturing. And of course, the Promise Ultra 66 PCI IDE controller. So here we've got the controller. There are no jumpers that you can configure. The primary channel is here and the secondary is over there. And they also labeled it nice, so it's very clear uh, which is which. And what else is going on? We've got a connector here to plug in to your uh, LED at the front. So I'm just gonna get a cable and show you how this works. Uh, these two pins worked for me. Um, and they work for both channels, for the primary and the secondary. I'm not quite sure what the other pins are for, but these two at the top, um, they worked for me. We're also using a Seagate Barracuda 5 120 gigabyte hard drive, a standard ID optical drive, this is a DVD-ROM, a SanDisk 120 gig SSD with one of these ID to SATA bridges and uh, just two standard ID ribbon cables. So to begin with, we're connecting the drive directly to the onboard ID controller. I'm doing this so we have a baseline level of performance just to see what the machine can do out of the box without the uh, additional PCI controller. I'm not 100% convinced that the motherboard does support 120 gig drives. So I place the jumper here and that turns it into a 32 gigabyte drive. Okay, here we are on the Pentium 3. Let's just enter the BIOS and I'm gonna load the Turbo default settings. Let's have a quick look at if the hard drive gets picked up. Yep, 32 gigabytes, that's all fine. And I'm also gonna change the boot order so that we can boot from the floppy drive first. That's it, save and exit. Okay, let's run fdisk to partition our hard drive. And we're gonna create a new DOS partition. And yep, that's gonna take a while. Okay, here we got Windows 98 installed. Really, I just quickly installed Windows, uh, also the chipset drivers and the video card drivers. So here we can see all these specifications, Pentium 3 with the AOpen uh, motherboard, 128 megabytes of RAM. Here's the video card. And what else is here? The storage controller here from Intel. And the next thing that you should be doing is enabling DMA mode. By default, uh, DMA mode is turned off and you have to go into the device manager and double click on the ID hard drive and under settings, here it is, DMA. Uh, tick the box, now you will get a warning message and sometimes I've had machines where activating DMA will uh, basically not corrupt Windows, but it won't make it, yeah, it'll, it'll basically stuff it up and uh, Windows doesn't work anymore. Um, so this might be another reason to get a dedicated uh, IDE storage controller. So I'm just gonna press OK and press OK here and close there and we're just gonna do a reboot and then we're gonna run a benchmark. So here we are running the ATTO disk benchmark and we're getting uh, just under 22 megabytes per second for writing and with the reading uh, 30, not quite 31 megabytes per second. Uh, this drive can do uh, over 50 megabytes per second. So it appears we are limited by the uh, UDMA 33 interface. So what we're gonna do next is start playing around with the Promise uh, Ultra 66 PCI ID controller. Promise has really good support. Here we are on the website, promise.com, and then we click on support. And the goal is to get the drivers as well as have a look um, for a BIOS update. Click on uh, legacy products. The family is Ultra. 
the series is also ultra and then the model is ultra 66 and here we have everything so here we've got the uh, bias so we're gonna have a look at what version uh, the controller I have has and uh, give a give it a go flashing it and here are the software drivers so from 95 to XP 2000 it's all supported and we've got a couple of choices here with the version we're gonna go with the latest version of course okay let's have a quick look at the user manual you can also download this from the promise website and here it states all the important things so data transfer rate up to 66 megabytes per second and this is really the highlight here um, support for drives up to 128 gigabytes because it's got its own bias so if your motherboard um, can't even handle 32 gigabyte hard drives then this is a really neat way around it okay guys now it gets interesting let's go in the bias I'm just gonna load the defaults again change the boot order so that we loading from the floppy drive first at the moment I've just installed the promise ultra 66 controller but nothing is hooked up yet now under integrated peripherals we're gonna disable the uh, two onboard ID controllers and that's it let's boot from the floppy drive so I'm actually really excited because this is the first time of me using one of these controllers as well we should get a BIOS message there it is from the controller so that's the controller identifying itself and i've got on the floppy drive the latest bias and we're just going to flash it even if it already has the latest bias i just want to show you what the process is all right here we go so we are on the floppy drive and i've created a folder here with the bias files so these are the files uh, that you can get from the website uh, that we looked at earlier so uh, pti flash Let's have a look what happens. Okay, backup BIOS to file, update BIOS from file. Okay, let's back up the file first. Let's um, put it into A, BIOS, and old BIOS.rom. Okay, that's all done. And let's update the BIOS from file, option number two. So that was an A slash BIOS. And the file name I wrote it down is UL200B18.bin. Uh, okay. Update success. Fantastic. Alrighty, that's all done. We're going to power cycle the machine and hopefully everything still works. Okay, here we are back. So the BIOS flash seems to have been successful. I also hooked up an optical drive. I've been told they don't work with these PCI controllers. So we can see the new BIOS version on. Oh no, it does pick up the optical drive. That's fantastic. So we're just going to boot from the Windows 98 floppy disk, which has uh, CD drivers. Um, as part of the startup files. So we're gonna load with CD-ROM support and we'll see if it gets uh, detected. No drives found, yeah, okay. So that confirms what I've read, um, that optical drives um, seem to be unsupported with uh, the PCI storage controllers, but that's not a big deal. We will come back and revisit optical drives later. Uh, maybe they work under Windows. So maybe they just don't work in DOS and you can still use them under Windows. So you just have to either borrow an optical drive to install Windows or copy the files onto the hard drive and install it from the hard drive. That's what I did uh, for this video. For this part, we're now using the Promise Ultra 66 controller. And because it supports large hard drives, I have removed the capacity limitation jumper. So this is now a full 120 gigabyte hard drive. Okay, so the hard drive is formatted. Now we got to boot from the hard drive. So I formatted it with the uh, slash S option with the system files. And we're gonna try first with the boot sequence C only. There are some other options we can try. And let's see if that actually works okay that worked great beautiful so let's have a look um, the way I install Windows I've got a folder um, w98 setup 
that has the Windows 98 setup files. And then I've got a project folder on Windows 90. It's called W9X Projects and I put drivers in there, uh, games, files, anything I, u uh, anything I need to use for a certain project. So let's quickly install Windows 98. I'm using, I'm using an answer file, so this is all automatically set and forget. Okay, and off we go. We can see at the bottom left the progress bar. It's copying files. Now the uh, storage subsystem only has a partial influence on the speed of installing Windows. The main deciding factor is actually the processor. So we're using a Pentium 3 600. So the amount of extra performance we can get out of this machine is limited. Had we used a 1 GHz or 1.4 GHz CPU, Windows 98 would install a lot faster. But still, just from my personal experience of installing Windows 98 on a range of machines, um, this looks uh, quite fast, to be honest. Okay, here we are. The video driver is all installed. I'm just going to crank up the resolution. Uh, 1280 by 1024 is what we're going to use and 32 bit uh, colors of course so that should look all a little bit nicer so let's have a quick look at the system again uh, just to confirm that we're using the same uh, components I believe it's under summary here so let's make this a little bit bigger so there you go Pentium 3 600 same motherboard 128 max of RAM we've got the GeForce FX let's see if it picks up anything interesting with the controller um, no so let's have a look in device manager there should be an unknown device as far as I know um, okay so we're getting an error with the Intel controller because we disabled those in the BIOS so that makes sense and here's the PCI mass storage controller which doesn't have to drive us just yet. Um, I want to run the ATTO benchmark now and see what performance we're getting out of the controller without the drivers installed. Okay the benchmark is still running but we can kind of see what's going on. Firstly the write performance is really low only 5 or 6 megabytes per second and the read performance is all over the place. We are getting up to 23 megabytes per second almost but uh, it's all over the place sometimes we're getting five sometimes we're getting ten so yeah very inconsistent so I'm gonna stop it we're gonna install the driver and benchmark again so to load the drivers we're going into the device manager double click on the PCI mass storage device reinstall driver click on next uh, display a list of devices go next have disk and then we have to navigate uh, to the C drive where I've got the drivers it's under here and let me see which driver it is I think it's this one and we're using Windows 98 there it is press OK press OK again here we are that's the driver next next and it should ask us to reboot off we go Okay, here we are. So the driver is now installed. It identifies itself as a SCSI controller. Uh, here it is. And just for those who are interested, the driver version from 2003. Alrighty, it's time to figure out what this device can do. Let's run the benchmark again. So there you go, guys. That looks a lot better. So in terms of write speeds, we're getting 37, 38 megabytes per second. And for reading, we're getting now over 40, uh, up to 44 megabytes per second. And it's also a lot more consistent. The read performance is higher than the writing. That's usually what you uh, want to wanna see. And the write performance is just a lot more consistent than it was uh, without the drivers. So yeah, very good performance. That looks very nice indeed. Also, just to confirm that the entire capacity has been picked up just fine, so we can see it here, 120 gigabytes. For this part, we've got the hard drive hooked up to the primary ID channel on the Ultra 66 and a optical drive is connected to the secondary channel. Okay guys, we're not done yet, there's more to test, so the next test is trying an optical drive. So I connected uh, a standard DVD optical drive to the primary port on the controller so we should see that uh, getting picked up now there you go and yeah we'll see what happens when we boot into Windows okay it looks like it's showing up here let me just check the tray yep that popped open I'm gonna put in a disk and see if we can install a game 
Okay, that's looking great. This is the Thief Collection. It's a DVD, so let's just install it and we shouldn't have any issues. So yeah, that confirms it. So under DOS, the optical drive uh, doesn't seem to work. I mean, the controller picks it up, but it's probably lacking uh, drivers. But under Windows, it seems to work just fine. So that's good news. So basically, you just need uh, to install Windows 98 somehow, either by copying um, the installation files onto the hard drive, that's what I did, or by just temporarily uh, connecting the ID drive uh, to the onboard controller and installing it that way. But yeah, that's pretty good news and seems to be working just fine. And there's one more thing I'd like to test and that is compatibility with DOS and games. On my Facebook group, um, someone contacted me and told me they had issues with this uh, controller under DOS, especially using uh, EMM386. So let's just go with the option with EMS memory. I've quickly installed uh, a sound card as well. So we have some music and sound effects. Um, I just realized that the optical drive not working under DOS, that's actually, yeah, that's a bit of a bigger problem than I thought initially, especially if you're building a hybrid machine where you want to play DOS games as well as Windows 98 games. So you might have to um, turn on one of the controllers on the motherboard or use a sound card with a uh, ID controller and connect to your optical drive there. So let's have a look. Let's, oh, I didn't put it in games. I think I put it in Doom. So let me just run the setup and configure all the options. Sound Blaster and for the sound card 225.18. That's all ready to go. So let's see if that all works. Okay, just gonna. Okay, it does use the mouse, so that's all good. Um, yep, that seems to run fine. We've got sound and music, so that's definitely working. But Doom doesn't use EMM386 as far as I know, so it doesn't use the EMS memory. So let's get out of this, and we're gonna try a Wing Commander 2. Now that is a game that doesn't run well on this machine. The machine we're using is too fast but we should be able to at least um, launch it and see if it crashes or anything like that. So yeah, you can see here it's using uh, expanded memory. So we've got the introduction. Yeah, that runs well too, way too fast. Let's start a new game and see if we can uh, get into, into the first mission. Alrighty, uh, create a new personal file. That's it, fly mission. Okay. That seems to, ooh, that was fast. Uh, the game seems to run all right. Let's see if we can get someone here. A bit difficult with the mouse. There you go. I've managed to get a kill. Let's see if we can... Oh, maybe I didn't. Or maybe that's another one. I'm not sure. There you go. Well, seems to be working fine in DOS. Bit of a bummer with the optical drive not working, but in terms of compatibility with EMS memory, there don't seem to be any issues. Okay, let me just Alt X and we are back in DOS. And for this part, we've got a SATA to IDEA bridge connected to the primary channel of the Ultra 66. And we're just connecting a solid state drive to see if we can max out this controller. And there's one more thing I want to look at, and that is really trying to squeeze the most performance out of this controller. So I cloned the hard drive onto an SSD. It's a SanDisk with 120 gigabytes, and hopefully we're getting uh, even higher transfer rates than we saw uh, with the uh, IDE hard drive. So I'm not having too much luck with the SSD. I cloned the drive and I'm getting this screen. So I reinstalled Windows and everything went fine up to the point where I installed the Promise ID driver. Everything else before worked fine. So there seems to be some 
issue uh, they maybe they don't like each other I'm not sure so uh, it looks like if you want to use an SSD you're better off switching to a SATA based PCI controller so I really wanted to figure out why the SSD with the SATA to ID adapter wasn't working so I tried another ID drive and I ran into the same issue so I got a few more drives and basically there seems to be uh, some compatibility issue with some drives just not working. So the drives that didn't work, uh, we've got the SanDisk SSD with the ID SATA adapter. We've got a Samsung SpinPoint 80 gigabyte hard drive that also had the exact same issue. And a drive from Seagate, this is the Barracuda 7200.7 with 120 gigabytes. However, but a lot of other drives did work. We've got a Western Digital here with 20 gigabytes. That worked fine. We've got an IBM DeskStar, I believe, uh, 30 gigabytes. That worked fine. We've got a Seagate Barracuda 4. That worked fine. And also the Seagate Barracuda 5. So I can't really see a pattern there in terms of uh, why one drive works and the other one doesn't. Um, the only trend I can see is that older drives seem to work and maybe modern drives not so much, but uh, really that's, it's, it's not really precise uh, to, yeah, I'm not able to narrow it down what it actually is. But yeah, that's something to keep uh, in mind if you're considering getting this controller. Okay guys, so let's go over everything that we found in the video. Uh, in terms of performance, this is great. It is definitely faster than your standard ATA33 controller that you find on many older motherboards. It supports large hard drives, so if your bias has a capacity limitation, this gets around it. Also, if your motherboard has DMA issues, if uh, enabling DMA doesn't work, uh, this is also a good option. You don't have to enable DMA, it all happens in the driver and excellent support. Uh, Promise has everything online, the manual, the drivers, the bars, so that's also very good. But the controller isn't perfect. Unfortunately, the optical drives don't work under MS-DOS, which is a real shame. Also, when you're installing Windows, you have to uh, plug the optical drive uh, onto your motherboard rather than this controller, or just copy the files across and install it from the hard drive. We also ran into some compatibility issues. Certain hard drives uh, simply don't work with this controller. I'm not quite sure what the exact reason is, but that's definitely worth uh, considering. So there you have it guys, not a bad controller. It's got a lot of good things going for it. However, it's not perfect with a few minor flaws. Let me know what you think of this product. Maybe you've used uh, one of these controllers before. Also, if you enjoyed uh, this video, let me know if you want to see more uh, storage controller stuff. I can definitely have a look on eBay and pick up a few more of these uh, controllers. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Share the video with your friends. Hit the like or the dislike button and leave me some comments down below. And I shall see you soon with another video.